Welcome to Oracle Analytics and our analysis of the impacts brought about by COVID-19, the government responses to the disease, and the emergence of vaccines to combat this deadly virus. During our analysis phase in March and April of 2021, situations changed on a daily basis. Questions arose about vaccine safety. There's been significant increases in disease incidents around the globe, especially in India. Government restrictions are loosening in key geographies as case numbers begin to fall and vaccine administration picks up steam. This led us to include even more data to refine our analysis and draw some conclusions, many that are reflected in what we hear from the news sources, but also some that aren't. One thing is certain, this pandemic has shown gaps in response across and within countries and regions, with socioeconomic factors playing a big role in COVID-19's relentless march around the world. At Oracle, we believe analytics and business intelligence are now driven by three major factors. Augmented analytics empower more people with better insights. Natural language and conversational analytics have become the norm, not the exception, and better insights lead to decisive action. We start with our COVID at a glance metrics, which identify confirmed cases, deaths, and overall positive test rates for all reporting countries and continents. By hovering over the map, you can see results by highlighted country. We also show a trend of cases over time by continent, as well as vaccinations per thousand over the last seven days. Drilling into a specific continent, you see those same metrics, in this case, North America, and easily identify that cases are falling and vaccine doses have topped 250 million people and nearly 100 million people have been fully vaccinated. We can also drill into cases over time and investigate Asia's recent spike. With over 500,000 deaths and over 37 million confirmed cases reported, focusing specifically on India, we see that absolute numbers of vaccine doses administered are high, but that the proportion of those fully vaccinated is only at 2%. Many people just want to ask questions of the data, such as, how is income level and country related to daily vaccinated per million? Oracle Analytics selects the best data and renders visualizations that answer the question. This often begs more context, such as, what about cases per million and new deaths per million? More insight is delivered automatically. You can see that a visualization is created to show how income levels of countries are skewing the distribution of vaccines. The richer the country, the more likely vaccines are getting into arms. You can focus on any of the visualizations, in this case, a map of the world. Quickly see results by country on tooltips and even open it up in its own project. Then. By adding a natural language generated visualization, you see something the map can't alone tell you. That 12 countries account for over 50% of the daily vaccines per million administered worldwide. Just by duplicating the visualization again, you can take that same data and turn it into another analysis, in this case, a table of data that can be sorted from high to low to show countries and their vaccines per million count through the latest reporting date. By highlighting the top 12 countries, you can then see them highlighted on the map. Adding more content to the tooltips, you enrich the meaning for everyone. What other insights can I uncover? I asked the system to explain daily vaccinations, and using the embedded algorithms, the system shows facts about the attribute as well as any anomalies it uncovers. Here, it's flagged two country income levels in Asia and two continents having higher than expected vaccination levels. We can bring that analysis back to the canvas for more review by choosing the continent anomaly insight and copy it to the main geography analysis. Now, clicking on South America, we can change the focus from global to regional quickly and easily. Let's now change views and show new vaccinations smooth per million compared to new cases smooth per million, along with those vaccines that are in use within each country and continent. We see Asia and South America increasing their vaccinations, but new case rates continue to grow as well. 
Compare that to Europe and North America, where vaccinations are also up, but case rates are trending down. We applied trend lines at a 95% confidence level to show the direction these measures are heading. Simply increasing vaccinations isn't the answer. It's increasing the percent of population vaccinated that triggers the decline in cases. If possible, vaccinations need to continue at a rapid clip to get out in front of the COVID caseload. We can see a long list of reporting countries, but let's look at the top 20 countries by new vaccinations per million, and you get an idea which countries are driving vaccination uptake with their populations. Small countries, such as Malta and Monaco, are having good results, but also a large country, the United Kingdom, is trending in the right direction. You can see facts about each country as you hover over its name, as well as which vaccines have been used in those countries. In this analysis, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Oxford AstraZeneca have contributed to a decrease in cases. Another country, San Marino, has exclusively used the Sputnik V vaccine in their country with similar downward trends in COVID caseloads. Vaccine hesitancy is on the rise for a variety of reasons. One way to measure what people think is to do a Twitter analysis and determine what topics are being discussed and whether they are positive, neutral, or negative. In this example, we use data flows to apply algorithms that identify the topics of the tweets as well as determine the sentiment of the comment. The first step is to identify the tokens, the words being used to see the topics that people are discussing. A quick visualization in a word cloud shows you both the terms and the frequency of the use. Adding a heat map visualization on a map, you can quickly see where the activity is coming from by a region or country. But what does all this chatter mean? Looking at the top 10 terms being used, we can see the leaders as well as the tone of the tweet, neutral, positive, or negative, and the reach of each of these tweets, meaning how many users that tweet can influence. While comments on some vaccines are tightly bunched together, others are spread apart, specifically Covaxin and Sinovac, meaning there is no strong correlation between positive, neutral, and negative, in a time where vaccine safety concerns are rising, understanding what's being said and how broadly it's being transmitted can help health authorities and governments influence populations to consider getting vaccinated rather than continue to sit on the sidelines. Governments have taken thousands of countermeasures to stop the spread of COVID, including social distancing, public health, movement restrictions, and lockdowns. Each action category also has detailed actions such as partial lockdowns, full lockdowns, school closures, or border cross closures. Here, the COVID stats are shown in blue, overlaid with different types of government measures that happened during the same period. In the UK, movement restrictions in red and lockdowns in green had a visible impact on new COVID cases in both early stages of the pandemic and again later in 2020. Let's look at all countries in which actions worked best. The vertical dotted line represents the day zero for the government action. The orange dots represent the value of the new cases per million. You can easily see whether the impact had an effect as the curve changes. See that social distancing has an impact on the curve a few weeks after each actions went into effect, as well as lockdowns and movement restrictions. Is there a different response to measures based on when they occur? Impacts before June 2020 in blue and after June in green show there is a difference. Analyzing individual measures within categories, we see that the full lockdowns are more effective than partial lockdowns. And as we scroll to the right, every curve that shows a big inflection after day zero is efficient, including curfews, domestic travel restrictions, and school closures. There are inevitably differences by country where some measures work better than others. For example, social distancing is not at all efficient in France in the second half of the year versus Israel, where it is very effective. This indicates that measures should be tailored to the country and region. One size definitely doesn't always fit all. Disparate data sources are needed to enrich our analysis. Downloading data from Our World in Data to analyze government responses to the pandemic, we need to combine that data in a meaningful way. To do that, we create a project and bring in five data sets, vaccinations, face coverings, public events, 
school closures, and stay-at-home orders. Automatically, these files are mapped and connected by common elements and metadata. In this example, joining the column day across the datasets. To show how easy it is to combine different data files into one analysis, we create a quick table with content from each of the source files. In this case, country, day, and a policy column from each table. As easy as one, two, three. Changing the visualization to a stacked bar chart, we now see clearly the timeline of each government action as it began, how prevalent it was, and how those actions changed over time. In December 2020, vaccine policies began at day 302 in COVID time, changing the mix of actions and resulting in a change in shape for each mandate over time. The viz shows a nice progression of mitigation measures through the history of COVID to the present day. How many measures did each continent put into place? From an earlier data preparation step, we used binning to group the number of measures by type, then displayed them by continent. We resort the graph to clearly see that the European Union had the most mandates overall, followed closely by Asia. To augment this analysis, we bring in additional data on vaccines, and the data is automatically connected to the existing data set. We can show the incidence of COVID cases over time and the overlay of vaccines given by date, but the scale is off. Change the scale by adding it to a second y-axis and the data will align. Using the continent visualization as a filter, we can see COVID cases and vaccines by geography. Vaccines are a key weapon in fighting COVID, but not the only one. Using Oracle Day by Day, Oracle's mobile personal assistant application, you can review any information you have access to anytime. The application will automatically return results from your feed, things you want to see, things others have shared with you, and things your management requests you to see. You can also use natural language to ask questions of the data yourself. In this example, we ask, show positivity rate by country in North America. The resulting answer is shown immediately, showing the best visualization to answer the question. You have the choice of changing the visualization in any way you choose. But you also have the choice of selecting a threshold to test to determine whether and how often the information is refreshed. In this case, the system will remind me that there is information to review when the positivity rate increases by 1% in the United States. You can set a time window on this alert as well, in this case, between April 30th and June 15th. Simply review your alert trigger after it's complete to make sure it's exactly what you're looking for. That triggered analysis can be shared with members of your team or emailed to anyone you choose. Sharing information is easy in Oracle Analytics, whether it's a report, a dashboard, or a metric or a mobile alert. More and more, we're on the go. All content created in Oracle Analytics is available on mobile as well. Looking at the vaccine analysis, I view each chapter in my story. I love the interactivity on my mobile device, and I could spend a lot of time on this, but I need to get to the airport now. I select Listen to Podcast as I hit the highway. Let's start by looking at daily vaccinations per million. There are a total of 105 countries. What stands out in this situation is that just a few countries account for more than half of the total vaccinations. 12 countries, Seychelles with 8.19%, Israel with 7. .9%. My colleague Isabelle is based in Paris. She requests her podcast in French. Les données représentent les vaccinations quotidiennes par million pour un total de 105 pays. Ce qui ressort de cette situation. No matter where you are, Oracle Analytics has you covered. Carrie just found new data about vaccine hesitancy that Jacques's been looking for, so she emailed him the file. He's been waiting for this, but he's away from his desk right now. How does this data impact his research? He can have the system analyze it for him from his mobile device. The data set shows measures and attributes as bubbles, so he just drags the bubbles in the order he wants to see them in, and the system creates a range of possible visualizations for him to review. He swipes right to keep the viz, swipes left to discard. The selected visualizations show up along the bottom of the screen. Satisfied? He uploads the project to OAC in the cloud. 
Now everyone has access, on mobile or from the web. Best thing? New insights in a minute or less.